Elon Musk has often talked about his Tesla master plan. What do you think his master plan is for Twitter? And how does it fit into Twitter's master plan? For well, Twitter. well, I think that Elon Musk really likes Twitter. Uh, he's obviously a uh, enthusiastic user, and, and you could totally see why uh, Twitter would want him on the board. I think for Musk, um, the master plan is, as you said, f about Tesla. And I think what's what's happening here, although I, I'm sure Elon has some really big ideas for for Twitter, you know, around free speech. The, I think the really the game behind this is protecting Tesla's most important, you know, marketing channel. And you know, Ed mentioned it's Elon Musk's, you know, sort of way of communicating with investors of, of just sort of raising enormous amounts of almost unlimited capital for Tesla. It's also this great way that he's been able to market, you know, both himself and the cars. And I think, uh, you know, having a, a stake in that, literally a seat on Twitter's board, um, is going to help him in the long term. You know, yesterday, uh, Twitter's value, you know, went up a bunch. $800 million or so would have been Musk's gain. Tesla went up a whole lot more, you know, a whole lot less as a percentage, but, but Musk made a lot more money on Tesla. His money is still in Tesla, and I think we should still be thinking about it in those terms. Now, looking at these tweets from Parag Agarwal and Jack Dorsey today, Parag tweeting, I'm excited to share we're appointing Elon to our board. Uh, it became clear to us through conversations in recent weeks that he would bring great value to our board. Jack Dorsey then retweeting this, and what you can imagine is a coordinated effort, saying, I'm really happy Elon is joining the board. He cares deeply about our role and Twitter's role in it. Parag and Elon both lead with their hearts, and they will be an incredible team. David, what do you make of their wholehearted embrace of this? Well, first of all, we know that Jack Dorsey and Elon Musk are good friends, and they sort of think alike in a lot of ways, uh, although certainly Elon Musk is a much more impetuous person than Jack Dorsey. But, um, you know, you have to say, having the richest man in the world, uh, one whose every move is attended to with such incredible uh, attention, has got to be good for any company. Uh, it's certainly been good for Tesla. And I think that if he really cares about Twitter, which he must, although this is something we're really just learning, that he cares about it organizationally, as opposed to just being one of its greatest power users, um, he's going to certainly bring tremendous value to their deliberations about strategy and product design, et cetera. Now, what kind of freedom do you think Elon Musk feels he is lacking on Twitter, given that he seems to have roamed there quite freely? Um, yeah, well, I think there's some risk, though, to, to Elon's uh, Twitter presence. First of all, he's somebody who's continually pushing the, the boundaries, right? And Twitter has been, you know, aggressive, or not aggressive, but, but has made some moves in terms of trying to rein in, um, you know, what it terms misinformation or hate speech and, and that sort of thing. He's also in the midder, middle of this very messy fight with the SEC over tweets that he sent, you know, years ago. Uh, Tesla has this Twitter sitter, and r right around the same time that um, uh, Musk was acquiring the these Twitter stakes, there's a court filing that drops where Musk is complaining about, about his, you know, being muzzled as he saw it by the SEC. So I could see it both, you know, as, as partly as a protective action. You know, this is a way for him to ensure that this um, stays put. Now, it'll be interesting, David, how this impacts the rest of the social media landscape. There was, uh, you know, quite a moment um, Elon Musk, in response to his question about an edit button, got a lot of feedback, including from Andrew Bosworth, who's now the CTO of Facebook, saying that they solved uh, the, the question of editing on Facebook long ago. You just leave a log of the edit. Elon Musk responds, Facebook gives me the willies. What do you think having Elon in Twitter's corner, or at least on Twitter's board, means for Facebook? Well, I would reiterate that having him on your corner is going to be bad for your rivals, um, period. Um, I would say many of us find things that have happened on Facebook give us the willies in recent years, so I can understand why he would say that. And I do think Twitter, on balance, has been a more responsible platform than Facebook. Um, the, the confusing thing is his repeated statements are several times saying, you know, he wants... Uh, free speech to be more allowed on Twitter that he thinks it's it's going to be more it, that it's maybe too restrictive, and it doesn't really make sense to me since he has never been restricted by Twitter itself. He's been restricted by the SEC, and I think he's had second thoughts about some of his own tweets. But um, you know, I, I I don't I think it. It's bad for Facebook. I do think maybe an edit function is a good idea for Twitter. I personally have trouble using Twitter. I'm a, I, I just find it 
awkward and off-putting in many ways. I'm an outlier in the tech journalism community in that way. But I can understand Twitter needs product improvements. Even Jack Dorsey says that all the time and doesn't make any bones about it. And yet, uh, Katie Stanton, longtime former Twitter vet veteran, was on the show yesterday. She said this is a pretty expensive way to a add an edit button if that's what you want. Max, you know, as you point out, Elon Musk like, likes making jokes, but he's rarely doing it just to joke. I mean, a steak is now worth four billion dollars. So there has to be more than an edit button desire here, right? Right. And I think that's why, you know, David's point notwithstanding, um, Twitter's playing with fire here. I mean, Elon Musk is really good at attracting attention. There's obviously, we saw in that chart, there is a large community of investors who will basically buy anything that he tells them to, and that's really good. But if, but if Twitter has a bad quarter, or you know, if Twitter loses you know, 20, 25% of its market value, you know, that's disastrous for Twitter's management team, and that's just like a blip on Elon Musk's radar. It doesn't affect his long-term uh, visions or anything like that. So the, the, the fear, I think, would be this is somebody who has in the past had trouble reining himself in, is very impetuous, and now all of a sudden Twitter, this you know, relatively small company, is, is attached to the Elon Musk train. So, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to ride that wave for better and probably for worse. So here's an open question. What does this mean for former President Trump, David, who has been banned from Twitter? I've asked Twitter executives, CFO Ned Siegel, many times if there's a path for him to come back, and he has said no. Could this, could this open the door, David? Well, it's a very legitimate question, given, uh, given the point that uh, Musk has made about uh, free speech. Because the first thing you think of, if Twitter were more lax in enforcing its speech rules, the implication, the number one implication would be that Trump might be allowed back on. I don't think of Musk as a particular defender of Trump. I think he's in a libertarian by inclination, although he has a very complex mix of views. Uh, so I would say, if anything, it's positive for the pres ex-president, but um, we can't know. Uh, there's so many things about this we can't know. The speed with which it all happened is dizzying. You know, it's, it's, I've just been thinking, what a weird thing. The richest man in the world is so incredibly impetuous. You never know what he's going to do next. It's like he's a professional global entertainer or something. So it, it, all the implications are going to be found out only through time, I'm afraid.